This is by far one of my favorite pieces of health optimization tech. Unlike most wearable health trackers, this one gets embedded in your skin. I've done this quite a few times at this point. I don't know why I'm nervous, but uh, let's do this. Three, two, one. So I've got this little over patch right here, which will just protect this sensor and help keep it on over the next 14 days. I'm really bad at putting these things on straight. I literally spent 10 minutes trying to do this and still messed it up. Well, that's as good as it's gonna get. All right, so why is this one of my favorite pieces of health optimization tech? The short answer, it gives you real-time data on how food or calories are impacting your energy levels or mood. Let me show you how this works. In college, I pulled quite a few all-nighters to work on video projects. Unfortunately, one of my favorite forms of late night fuel was Red Bull. That smells like midnight in 2019. If you're a Red Bull person, then maybe you drank the sugar-free version, but the standard version has a lot of sugar in it. Now, I'm not gonna drink this Red Bull because I've cut back on caffeine since 2019. However, in the spirit of self-education and self-experimentation, I am gonna be drinking this bottle of Sprite here. Ah, no! F I don't have a lot of sugar, so it was kind of alarming how sweet this was. Oh. <coughs> All right, it's empty. After drinking the bottle of Sprite, I decided to sit down and play video games for about an hour and a half to simulate myself editing in college. The graph that you're seeing on screen is a live view of my blood sugar levels during the time I was playing video games. Check that out. It goes way up and then it begins to crash. I drank that bottle of Sprite yesterday afternoon and to be honest, it kind of hijacked the rest of my day. Like I was saying earlier in the video, I don't really eat sugar. In fact, I eat pretty clean for the most part. So taking in all that sugar at once kind of hit me like a truck. Right after drinking all that Sprite, I felt kind of gross. My body wasn't used to that. It was just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Then after playing video games, I felt really tired and lethargic. I was hungry too, but not for like high quality food, but for more junk food. And then when I came back in here and tried to work again, I just didn't feel as sharp as I normally do at that time of day. All those things that I just mentioned are mild symptoms of hypoglycemia. We're gonna take a detailed look at what this means and why this happens, but first let's visualize what the sugar content of a bottle of Sprite actually looks like. So there were 63 grams of added sugar in that bottle of Sprite. To measure this, I grabbed my food scale, put a glass on it, and then zeroed it out with the weight of the glass on, and then scooped 63 grams of table sugar into that glass. Now, I've seen those videos before where people will show the sugar content and table sugar of different drinks, but when you do it yourself, it's a really powerful way to visualize how much sugar that actually is. And it's crazy to think that for a period of my life, I was drinking that much sugar or more every day to boost my energy and be more productive. All right, let's dive into why my college nutrition strategy wasn't great. For this to make sense, it's important to understand the relationship between glucose and insulin. Earlier when I drank that bottle of Sprite, I essentially dumped a bunch of glucose into my bloodstream. Remember that graph showing my blood glucose while I was playing video games? Well, that rapid increase on the graph shows the sugar going from the bottle of Sprite to my digestive system and then into my bloodstream. This is where insulin comes in. Now, insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas and its job is to regulate glucose in the body. For me, it was useful to think of insulin like a key. To put it simply, what happens is insulin binds to insulin receptors on your cells. Once this happens, a glucose channel opens up, allowing glucose to leave the bloodstream and enter the cell. Then that glucose can be used as energy. Now, when there's excess glucose in the bloodstream, like right after I drank that bottle of Sprite, the body will store as much of that as it can in your muscles and your liver. But once those stores fill up and if glucose is still elevated, then the body begins to store that excess glucose as fat. As we saw earlier, drinking that bottle of Sprite caused my glucose levels to spike and then crash down. There are a few other things though that can cause your glucose levels to spike. First up, we have food and drinks. Bad sleep can also mess with your glucose levels, a lack of movement and exercise, and stress. If you're constantly spiking your blood glucose levels, eventually your cells will become less responsive to insulin. This is called insulin resistance. If you become insulin resistant, this means that your body is gonna have a harder time storing energy in your muscles and liver, and you'll end up storing more glucose as fat. Now, I'm not positive on this, but I'm pretty sure that in college, 
I became somewhat insulin resistant. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to regulating glucose, there are four levers that make a big change. Diet, sleep, exercise, stress. When I got to college, my diet started to change. I started eating more rice, ramen, and bread, all things that I now know increase my blood glucose levels. And when I first got to college, I started drinking an alarming amount of sugary caffeinated drinks. The amount of time I spent asleep and the quality of that sleep was pretty atrocious. I pulled all-nighters, stayed up past midnight, and woke up at 5 a.m., and drank caffeine at night to keep myself going. Now, at least at first, I was getting pretty good exercise, so I'll give myself a pass in that category. As far as stress management goes, I can't think of a time in my life where I've been more stressed out than my years in college. I started working as a freelance filmmaker and tried to build a business while being a full-time student, and yeah, that was stressful. Based on all this and the way I remember feeling at the time, I'm pretty sure my blood glucose levels were constantly spiking and crashing throughout the day. These two photos were taken a year apart from each other. My diet and exercise were pretty much the same throughout that entire period. In the space of a year, I went from 177 pounds with pretty low body fat to over 200 pounds and feeling pretty flabby. Essentially, to have good metabolic health, you want to optimize your diet so that there's not a lot of spikes and crashes in blood glucose levels. You want to get good sleep, you want to get good exercise, and you want to manage your stress. Instead, I ate a bad diet, sabotaged my own sleep, got okay exercise, but put myself through a lot of stress. That's why tracking blood glucose is so powerful. It gives you real-time quantitative data on how diet, exercise, sleep, and stress are impacting your blood glucose variability. So here's how it works. You install a sensor like I did at the beginning of the video. You pair that sensor with an app, and then you periodically scan the sensor with your phone. Now this incredible company called Very sent me a few of these sensors and set me up with their app. In Very's app, I log the food and drinks that I consume throughout the day, and then it scores them on the scale of one to 10, 10 being good, one being bad. For instance, that bottle of Sprite I drank yesterday, it gave that a three out of 10, whereas the smoothie that I drink every morning is usually a nine or a 10, depending on how my glucose levels respond to it. So yesterday I had this homemade chili with chicken for lunch, and very rated that nine out of 10. I've been able to use the information from this app to make adjustments to my diet and optimize it just a little bit more. For instance, I've cut back on the amount of carrots that I put in my chili because I found that including fewer carrots makes my blood glucose more stable. I've also found that doing really light cardio after meals helps keep blood glucose stable. So if I have the time after I eat, I'll go on a 10 to 15 minute walk just to keep those levels constant. Now, earlier we talked a bit about insulin resistance. What's cool though, is that if you optimize your diet, get good sleep, maintain a quality exercise program and manage your stress, you can actually become more insulin sensitive, which means that you'll end up storing less glucose as fat. So if you're interested in giving blood glucose monitoring a try, Very has been kind enough to set up viewers of this channel with a $30 discount. To get $30 off, all you have to do is use the code VSM-ProjectAndrew at checkout. Again, that's VSM-ProjectAndrew for $30 off. Also by using this code, you'll be supporting future content on this channel. I work super hard to make the best content possible for you guys. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, this is a great way to do so. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.